Hi, I'm Redneck Computer Geek. Welcome to the first episode of Things I Wish I Had Have Known. Today, it's going to be the flatbed on my truck. I built this about three, three and a half years or so ago. I'll post a link down in the description for the original video. And I just would like to go and go around it and show you guys some things that have changed over the last few years or things that I wish I had known when I built it. One of the first major things, as you can tell, there's snow on the ground. And when I ended up building this flatbed, it significantly lightened the rear of the vehicle. And so now, during the winter time, I end up having to put in a tray of cinder blocks. It's basically just a bed frame laid out, and the cinder blocks I laid in, and then I welded tabs on either end to hold them in. And I put the ratchet strap on to make sure that they don't go flying out. The other thing about this is it's really nice having the ratchet strap because if I need to offload this in order to load something quickly, it's a simple stack them to the side, offload, and put it back on. The other thing about that you'll notice is over here where Johnny is, you'll see that there's all kinds of mud up the side of the cab. Now, the reason for that is that I chose to go with boards for my bed. The reason I went with boards for my bed is I wanted something that, well, let's face it, it's an old Ford and things break. And I built it with boards in the bed because all I do is I take out two screws on the rear and all the boards come out and it's really quick and easy to get to everything underneath here and fix it. That's really nice when it comes to fixing it. The problem is boards over time shrink. And so what has happened over time is along this edge, with the board shrinking, yeah. I ended up opening a gap across here, and now my entire back of my cab gets plastered with mud. So, one note here is that I'm going to have to go and expand the board somehow in order to cover that gap. It just happens. Wood shrinks. Another thing that's happened while I've owned the vehicle yeah. is here on the rear, neither one of these lights works and the reason being is because I'm consistently stepping up and I'm smashing into them so what I ended up doing was I converted to one of these over-the-top LED lights works really good illuminates the snot out of everything so it actually makes it so you can see just about everything in the dark the other thing that you'll notice right here is that on a regular Ford Ranger On a regular Ford Ranger, your bed height would be down in this area. And so the reason, and I explain it in my video that this is so high, is to clearance for the tires when they're all the way bottomed out. The problem with that is that I have to use extended ramps when I want to load a lawn tractor, I want to load anything. My ramps have to be a good two foot longer. I actually use eight foot boards for my ramps and I still end up with issues trying to clearance this on a really low mowing deck. So that's been another learning experience. The other thing that you're gonna run into when you start running one of these is that I really, John, come this way, I really have got to put in some sort of cover for this tire because over time, the road grime coming off of it actually sandblasts the underside of this and it sandblasts holes right through the back whoop, over this way it actually sandblasts holes all the way through the back of the cab corner and so this has actually been plastered up with Bondo because of the fact it's blown a hole through twice um, another thing about dealing with this is if you have problems with people stealing gas in your area it makes it really, really accessible. So that's another thing is if you're dealing with people in your area that steal gas, on these Fords, it's extremely simple. All you do is reach in and you pop the siphon valve that's right here, and you can literally just siphon gas right into a five gallon bucket, which is great in the middle of winter. If you run out of gas in your plow truck, you quickly need gas for a snowblower. That's all well and good but it also means it's easy for somebody to steal. Another thing that I did when I built this flatbed originally was I used 
the original tail lights. And yet again, that's been a learning experience of using the flatbed because this is actually the second set of lights. And yet again, here's the reason. So what I intend to do later is either A, weld something down in here or replace these with actual trailer lights. Just another note. The crane obviously is an addition from the original flatbed design. It's welded right directly into my frame rails. You can find the how-to video on this. I'll post that down in the description. I love the crane. I have lifted lawn tractors with it. I have lifted snow blowers with it. I have lifted all kinds of stuff with it. The one problem with it is that you have to take a board or something and kick it in and chuck it underneath this piece of frame because it will literally pull the whole truck over. So that's another thing to go and think about. The other thing that I'll go and say is there's an old off-road thing about you can paint it any color you want as long as it's black. If you own a flatbed, you really should think about that because you're going to scratch these rails. You're going to hit them with anything and everything you go to load. Um, everything is going to slide down them. When you put chains across in order to hold something, when you put a ratchet strap, it's all going to chafe this up. Paint it a color that you can get in spray paint consistently and just go at it every once in a while. I really recommend Rust-Oleum double coverage. Um, I also recommend the Rust-Oleum rust cover on, and preventative primer makes a big difference in doing this. Um, when I did this first, I did it with just Rust-Oleum over the top of it. It lasted about the first year. The second time I redid it, I did it all with Rust-Oleum uh, Rust Preventative Primer, and then I did a coverage, and it lasted a good solid two years easy. Otherwise than that, those are the things that I've learned as I've been dealing with this over the last few years. Once you start building a flatbed, you never finish. You will continue adding to it and modifying it, so keep that in mind. Um, build yourself a solid base that you can work from and add to. My goals in the future are A, adding the wheel covers. I want to add boxes on each side so that I can have storage in here. It's just a single cab truck, which means there's not much storage inside. And once you lose the sides of an actual bed, everything in here gets caught by the wind. Everything. Every single side draft of wind that you catch across here is going to take your contents and put it out the side. The other thing is, is when you don't have the bed rail side, the only way you can put trash bags up here, you can put anything up here, is right up in against the cab. Because anything down across these edges, the wind catches it right off the rear. So that's another thing to consider before you convert to a flatbed. Thanks guys, I really appreciate all the support. If you know anybody that's talking about a flatbed, share this video to them. If you're thinking about it yourself, put it in your favorites and come back to it. And hopefully if you're new to this channel, you'll subscribe and support me and my family and what we do. Have a good day. Yeah, I know, the pretty rocks. All right, you ready to make a video? Yep. Okay. Hey! <laughs> oh, thank you. Do I need the pretty rock? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just found it. Oh, okay. Well, let's put it right here. You ready to make a video? Yeah. All right, why don't you stand with the crane? Yeah, yeah. Now I gotta get up here. Oh, you're gonna get up there? Yep. Yeah. Now how am I gonna 